Hey, uh, and it's gotcha questions. And I brought a th- thought of eight questions that uh, are kind of uh, things you should ask your minister. Ooh, are we quiz? Oh, we're quizzing ministers. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were quizzing me. I was like, right. ooh, because there's all these videos. And, and I haven't bothered to do a response to them because so many of my friends have. But these preachers and these apologists will come out with, Here's five questions atheists can't oh, answer. Right, right. And then no like of that. every atheist on the planet who's got a YouTube channel is like, uh, hello, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I can answer those or I can at least explain why you've asked a question that can't be answered. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Well, a lot of folks claim to have a pers- deep personal relationship with God mm-hmm. right, and the man upstairs. And if that's the case, you should be able to ask him a few questions of, about his motivations or the workings of the world. And, and furthermore, all people everywhere with that same sort of relationship with God should get the same answer. I might, <laughs> I might have a lot of fun with this and occasionally put my Christian hat on. So I will. That's, that's fine. Please do. Let's dance. Okay. And God would never lie and tell one person one thing and another person another thing, right? God is not a God of lies, although there are verses where he intentionally deceives people. You're playing Christian advocate. Yes, I, I am. Um, there are verses where he intentionally deceives people and gives them over to reprobate mind as long as it serves his purpose. But when it says that God wouldn't lie, what it really means is that God wouldn't lie to a true, sincere oh, follower I of see. God. So, the, so some of these folks are not true Christians. Sure, when he, when he, <laughs> when, you know, when he hardens Pharaoh's hearts or when there are uh, various uh, scribes and prophets and he gives them over to reprobate minds or he deceives them mm-hmm. or when God, when Jesus speaks in parables, he's intentionally speaking so that some people will not understand. And I view that as a lie. Like if I'm if I'm talking in code and I'm saying something so that you understand but they don't understand, then whatever is being directed at them, I think's a fucking lie. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, that's just kind of. But yep. who am I to question God? That's right. Let's question. Let's question God. So here are some questions. Uh, why won't God heal amputees? He does. I've seen it. You've seen it. Oh yes. <laughs> I've seen it with my well with my own eyes in a video on okay. YouTube. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and also, I mean, I've watched him make limbs longer and stuff like that. Um, what you're asking is one of these sort of atheist gotcha questions. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, God has a plan, and he will heal those whose healing is within the bounds of his plan. But if he doesn't heal a particular amputee, that doesn't mean that God can't heal an amputee. It just means he didn't heal that one because he has a special plan for that person. Right. I have a friend of mine. We were just at a wedding last weekend. Unfortunately, because of his diabetes, he had to have a below-the-knee amputation. Oh, of one gosh. of his legs. Now, maybe God will heal him and grow that limb back. Maybe he won't. But if God just ran, went around healing all amputees, they wouldn't learn their lesson. All right. <laughs> and there would be too much scientific evidence of miracles, and then everybody would just be forced I to believe. See. God has to be cagey. Okay. And lie. But, uh, but what if you pray for it? Well, oh, 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 great proxy of God. <laughs> prayer is not a vending machine. <laughs> oh, God Jesus is not a vending machine where you put prayers in and Jesus what you want comes is. out. So, uh, so God answers all prayer except when he doesn't. Oh, sometimes he says no or maybe or later or wait. Yeah, right. right. God, I'm going to have to shower right after the show, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there's actually a very good website, Why Won't God Heal Adam Yatees? It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I highly recommend folks read it. And there's an article on that website called Why Won't God Heal Amputees that I highly recommend as well. If you, yeah. if you read one thing, read that. Uh, is there free will in heaven? No. Okay. No. Because there's not free will either way. Oh, okay. Well, uh, is, and, let's, and by let's the way, put that aside. <laughs> if you talk to like the Calvinists. Right. There's no free will, right? There's no free will. Okay. Well, supposedly there's no evil in heaven. So right. if there is free will, then it's possible to have both free will and the absence of evil in a place. That, that's, that's the problem. And that's why I have always, even, and I'll take my hat off for a second to put it back on, when I was a believer, always understood that in the libertarian view of free will, of you can do whatever, that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. But the sort of free will that I believed in as a Christian was you are free to accept or reject God. God gives you that freedom. 
But by the time you get to heaven, the only people who will be in heaven are people whose character is such that they have given, subjugated and given themselves over to God uh, such that they would never even want to. It's a so mid technically, <laughs> technically, God would at that point allow you to do something that was we would normally consider free will. It's just you wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's like saying, I'm free to kill people, but I will never do that. And so because of that, uh, I'm safe around people. And so God picks out the people who would never do the things that he doesn't want them to do, and those are the people who go to heaven. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's, a, it's a, basically a post hoc rationalization, I guess. Yes. Okay. Um, to continue on a little bit, uh, if there is no free will in heaven, uh, you're just a mindless robot in Disneyland. I think so. Yep. And it's God, a small God, world. God could have done that here too. <laughs> and yeah. The better, the better question for me is if God already knows who's going to end up in heaven and who's not, then why create all the people who aren't? And why not just create a bunch of people in heaven who he knows there is already going to get there? That, there you go. Why, why are we dancing through all these hoops? Right. And, and why do we have this crazy gift of free will? Because mm. it's doesn't seem to make a difference. Okay. Did God intend Jesus' death? Yes. It was planned from the beginning. Okay. So there is this idea that Jesus died for your sins, and it was a perfectly executed plan, and the subsequent systematic murder of Jews is just a demonstration of the wanton evil of Christianity. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. It's, it's a demonstration of God's power. The fact that God knew we would screw it all up, that, you know, it's, it's not like when he stuck Adam and Eve down in the Garden of Eden, he was like, hmm, I wonder what they'll do. He knew that they were going to eat from that tree, and they knew the order they were going to eat. You know, oh, they're going to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil first, and then he's going to have to punish them, and then that's going to bring sin into the world. He, all of this was part of the plan that he decided he was okay with. The best possible plan. But it's our fault. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's our fault. <laughs> Don't ever mistake. It's our fault. And by the way, <laughs> it's mostly women's fault. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they're the ones that were tricked by the serpent in the right, first place. Right, they got, they, you got to blame the woman. Men, men just did what the women told them to do, <laughs> which generally we think is wise. <laughs> yeah. Like I happy wore this wife, shirt today life, because right? I was, would you wear my shirt on the show? Yes, I will wear your shirt on the show. <laughs> okay. Well, if God did not intend Jesus' death, then, he, then the whole thing was kind of a screw up. Yep. And, and the Jews are getting blamed for the mistakes. Was Jesus' death a sacrifice? Well, it, so I would personally, let me, atheist hat. I wish I had like two hats. I need two hats. <laughs> right. So atheist hat. No, that wasn't a sacrifice. Oh, you're going to beat me up and make me re feel really bad and then kill me for a weekend and then I get to be God forever. That's not a sacrifice. Right. That's like, and, you and know. the guy upstairs, his favorite thing is killing, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, let me swap hats. Well done. <laughs> It's not just his death that was the sacrifice. For God to take human form and subjugate himself to a world of sin, to allow himself to be tempted by Satan, to allow himself to be in the presence of fallen beings in order to eventually take all of their sin and suffering on him, his mere existence was already a great sacrifice. Can you imagine being the all-powerful governor of the universe and then voluntarily taking human form to be surrounded in... Sounds like theater. ...going <laughs> down into the sewer? That was a sacrifice. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and he did it because he loves you. Right. And who, who exactly is this sacrifice for? The people that God likes. <laughs> No, it's, 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 uh, the sacrifice was to God himself, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, so he sacrifices himself to himself oh. to serve as a loophole, yeah. Yeah, right, uh, for, but, for laws he made up, right? But he did it for, <laughs> he did it for us. Uh-huh, okay. Well, at least not you and me, us, because we're fucked. But he did it for the other people, the people he wants to save. Okay. Uh, this one I've talked about before. Why did Christians stop killing Jews? Because it was convenient to sidle up to them in order to, uh, to work against a common enemy. Oh. oh, the atheists, I guess? Yes. Oh. There's no such thing as Judeo-Christian. That's a garbage word that was invented. Oh, my goodness. So yes. Christians yes. would fight Jews and Protestants would fight. See, Protestants and Catholics won't get along until there's a common enemy. Ooh, Jews, let's go after them. And then Christians and Jews won't get along until there's a common enemy. Ooh, Muslims. And then Christians, yes. Jews, and Muslims won't yeah, get along. Beware of ecumenicism. Until, until we start to take over. <laughs> okay, right. 
then all of a sudden you'll find I'm a I'm a Judeo Christianologist. <laughs> right. And the and the United States was founded on By the way, I'm trademarking that right now. <laughs> Judeo Christianologist <laughs> t-shirts. Uh, that design is mine, okay. which means somebody's going to have one made and ready to order before the show's right. over. <laughs> right. So uh, briefly, it was the biggest theological event of the 20th century, yet no seminary seems to know about it. They don't seem to teach it. Um, Martin Luther was a big anti-Semite. Uh, Hitler picked up his plan and executed it. During the Holocaust, six million Jews were killed. And uh, the Jews get blamed. Let his, let his blood be on us and our children, according to Matthew 27, 25. So why did it stop? So either Christianity was wrong for millennia for killing Jews uh, or it was wrong to stop now. Which is it? <laughs> Either way, you're kind, of, you're kind of screwed. Next one, does your church have a bank account? Well, my church doesn't. <laughs> yeah. But most churches that I, I know of have a bank account. Right, right. But Matthew preaches... Don't worry about the future. Uh, God will take care of you. Oh, but that's not a church's bank account is not the church working worrying about the future of people. It's about the church, church ensuring worrying. that the church persists because God has commanded that. Oh, okay. It, the, the fact that you think those two commands from God are in conflict doesn't mean they actually are. You're a fallen <laughs> being I'm who fallen, can't understand. I can't this. understand these things, yes. right? And if your church is not following Jesus, then why should you? Does your church carry insurance is another question. I don't know. Does, do you, does yeah, any of the religious magic insurance. protect against acts of God? I, I think they still make insurance claims. I'm pretty sure they still call the fire department when their church catches fire That's when lightning right. strikes it. <laughs> so uh, if, you're, if your church carries insurance, then insurance is a waste of money if God, if God takes care of you. but It's not it, necessarily, though, yeah. that they don't believe. It's that... The current laws that we have require them to carry oh, insurance. That's the, that's the, they're, so they're still confident God will so they you know, should, save. So they should just you know, not, not file claims when there's a problem, right? Yes. <laughs> that's exactly what should happen. So I understand the law requires your church to carry insurance, but you should be confident that if God wants your church to survive, it will do so without insurance. And so when something bad happens, the, the law does not require you to file a claim. As far as I know, I have a lawyer in the back room who can, who can double check me, but I don't think you're ever required to actually file an insurance claim. You may be file, required to, fi to carry insurance. Um, and you would only have to do that to pay off, you know, whoever you actually owe and stuff. But if that's the case, why don't you just pray for the money? Yeah. <laughs> Seems to work. Prayer, prayer works, right? <clears throat> Next one. Uh, what becomes of the souls of miscarried babies? Um, are they tortured forever for having original sin and not professing belief in Jesus? It's kind of that's kind of sick and evil. No, 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 no. They, they they automatically go to heaven. They automatically go to heaven. By the way, it doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible, but that's the shit that Christians make up in order to comfort themselves and so they don't have to answer this question. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And if they get a free pass, then why not kill them? Yeah. <laughs> Just Ooh, like look, I'm going to put a soul into her, but I'm not going to make that soul responsible and subject to sin until after it's actually well either born or reaches the age of age reason. reason right. Depends on which church you're in as to what bullshit they've made up. Um, but it does mean that, like we, we mentioned before, um, Andrew Andrea Yates was essentially trying to follow. If her understanding of right. doctrine was correct, she did the most loving thing she could do. Yeah, yeah. She, I think her reasoning was theologically sound, even though she was cray cray. Yeah. Well, if you if, <laughs> if you can guarantee that your children are going to go to heaven by potentially damning yourself, and you do that, what could be more loving? That's right. It's a sacrifice. And if heaven's actually better, what are we waiting for? Okay. And practically speaking, uh, you know, abortions are are not not much of a moral problem, right? Because you're. It's a get out of jail free card, right? Okay, uh, so if uh, you're bored sitting, if you're a teenager or, you know, non-believer or questioning and you're sitting bored in church someday, start asking these questions and watch, watch, watch the minister squirm. <laughs> watch for the spin and the equivocation. Uh, Let me tell you what's going to happen with most of these questions. <clears throat> so you'll get a pat on the head. Jokes aside, um, I've asked some of these questions while I was still a believer. Mm -hmm. 
these are questions that theologians have been asking each other, and you're going to get different answers to based, based on doctrine uh, of which church or which denomination you're talking to. But what happened to me most of the time and what I see happen to a lot of other people is this. Ask me a difficult question about God. Um, what's his middle name? <laughs> <laughs> Herman, because that's what the H in Jesus H Christ stands for. Okay. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> if, so, like, the, the one about what, what happens to babies that die. Okay. Or what happens to the souls of babies that die? Okay. The answer that you're actually most likely to get is, we don't know. That's something that God hasn't revealed to us, but we know that God is truthful and loving and compassionate. Uh, and so we must just trust that God is going to do the right thing because God can't do the wrong thing. That's the sort of answer that you get. It is a complete non-answer. It is an acknowledgement that we don't... So this whole thing of we don't know would be problematic, except that the full answer is, I don't know, but God knows, and I trust that God knows, and you are wrong to not just trust that God knows. There's right. something you have not been walking in your, you know, walk with Christ correctly. You have some sin in your life that is preventing you from trusting that God knows the answer. And you, minister, must be in the same boat because yeah. he, 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 you know, you must— uh, in this personal relationship with him, he might he must not be trust you enough with the right answers. And if you are lucky enough to get to heaven, there's no guarantee that God will ever explain himself because God doesn't have to explain himself to you. You are so small that you could not possibly even understand it. Brow beating. This is why that. you just yeah. need to trust God. <laughs> let go <laughs> and let God. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's buzzwords. It's T-shirts. It's let go and let God. Okay. All right. Well, that was I'm fun. done. I'm that was done. fun. That's good enough. <laughs> do, you, do you have?